Okay, this problem is not written in the proper form, so I can't really answer any of these just yet because I need to get it into the format we've been looking at. You have to have a one after the equal sign. You have to have an x quantity squared over a number and a y quantity squared over a number. So uh, basically this information, we can't tell just from looking at it what the center or the a and the b are. So I have to first take this one and use complete the square steps in order to put it into the proper form. So that's what we're gonna do. So in order to do complete the square steps, what we're going to do is we need to first write the x's together. So we're going to do 16x squared plus 64x. And then we're going to do 9y squared minus 54y. And then the negative 1, the 1 I'm going to put on the other side over there and it becomes uh, negative. So I'm just basically regrouping here, putting the x's and the y's uh, together. Next, what I want to do is I want to factor out the number in front of the x squared and the y squared. We're gonna factor by grouping each one separately. I wanna get a one in front of the x squared because eventually I wanna do complete the square and I need to have a one in front of the x squared in order to do that. So I'm gonna pull out a 16 here and I get x squared plus four x. I'm gonna leave a space here because eventually I'm gonna do the complete the square steps and I'll end up getting a number of them and add uh, inside here. Next one. Again, what you do is you pull out the number in front of the, uh, the y squared term. So we're factoring out a, a y here, and we're factoring it just from these two here. So we're going to get y squared minus 6y. Again, I'm going to leave a space there because, again, I'm going to be adding something on the inside of the parentheses. So now this, it's properly set up, and I'm ready now to do the complete the square steps. So I'll do that down over here. So let's do that with the 4. Complete the square, you always want to, the first step, divide the first, this number in front of the non-squared variable, divide it by two. Second step, you're gonna square it. It's always the same two steps you do with complete the square. Okay, so we have four divided by two equals two, and then we have two squared, that's gonna equal four. So again, you, we divide it by two, that's the first number, and then step number two, we squared it, and we got a four. The four, we're gonna go ahead and add that inside here. Now we have to also add 4 to the other side of the equation. However, you don't want to just add 4. That's going to be incorrect. The reason why is because if I were to multiply all this back out again, I would get 16 times all this. I would get 16 times 4 and that wouldn't cancel out with the 4 I have on this side. So if I just put 4 here, I'm actually changing the problem from what it originally was. So whenever you do complete the square and you have a number on the outside of the parentheses, Whatever number you add here, you must multiply by the number in front of the parentheses. So we have to multiply this by 16 when we bring that over on the other side. So whatever number you add inside here, it's got to be multiplied by the number outside when you bring it over here on this side. So this one has to be done the same way. We're going to take uh, negative 6, divide that by 2, we get negative 3. That's your step number 1 that we got there. Number 2, we're going to take negative 3 and we're going to square it you get a 9. So the 9 that we get here, we're going to add the 9 inside there. On this side, we're adding 9, but then you have to multiply it by whatever number is outside the parentheses. In this case, we have another 9 that's going to be there. So now this is uh, properly done. We have, again, these numbers that are being multiplied by the numbers in front of the parentheses. So next, we're going to bring this down and we're going to do a factoring step. Because we've done the complete the square steps, divide by 2 and square it, that means that we can take this now and write it as uh, an x inside quantity squared. This one, we can do a y with a quantity squared. So we have that set up properly. Now what goes inside each of these parentheses is the answer that you get in step number one of each of the complete the square. So in here, step number one, we got a two. So you're gonna put a two there inside that one. And then over here, we're gonna put in negative three. Now we just need to add this on the other side and if we add that, to combine that together, you should get 144. Now we're still not in the proper form yet because we need to get this equal to one. So I'm gonna divide this by 144, this by 144, and this one by 144. And by doing that, that's gonna allow us to get the the proper form. So by doing that, now we're going to get x plus 2 squared over 9 plus y minus 3 squared over 16, and that's going to equal 1. So finally now we've got it into a form 
that we can work with. This is the format that you want. So uh, now that we've actually put it into the proper form, let's now go through and answer all the questions that they're asking. Okay, now that we've done the complete the square and we've got the equation, we're ready now to answer these questions here. So the center is always going to be opposite sign of each of those that you see there. It's going to be negative 2 and positive 3. Opposite sign of, the, of, the, of this number, opposite sign of that number. X comes first. Next, we want to find the A, B, and C. We notice that the larger number is underneath the Y. That means that the ellipse is going to be opening up and down here. Okay, so again, if it's underneath the Y, it opens in the Y direction. That's how you know it goes up and down. The A is always the square root of the larger number. So A is equal to square root of 16, which is 4. Your B is square root of 9, which is 3. We can find the C right away by using the formula 4 squared minus 3 squared. That's A squared minus B squared is the formula. And we get C is the square root of 16 minus 9, which is going to get square root of 7 uh, left over. And decimal, it's about 2.65 uh, if you get the decimal for that one. Okay, now we're ready to answer these questions here. The eccentricity, that's square root of 7 over a value of 4. If you do that, you get 0.66. So, because 0.66 is closer to 0, that means we should expect our ellipse to be more rounded, more rounded than the ones we've already looked at previously in this section. Major axis is 2 times a, 2 times 4 is 8, minor is 2 times b, 2 times 3 is 6. The last two things we need is the vertices and the foci. We need to get that off the graph itself. So first, I'm going to begin by graphing this, the graph in the uh, center, and we have this. Negative 2, 3 is uh, right there. The A value has to go in the direction that's opening up. So because it's opening up and down, my A value is 4. We're going to go up 4 and down 4, and that's going to be our vertices that we'll go ahead and enter in here. We go up 4, up 4, we're going to make a dot. That's one of our vertices. Then we're going to go down four. We have three down to here. We'll go one more. And now we get this. So now we have our two vertices. I'm just going to go ahead and indicate those now that I have them on the graph. So I just, I just want to indicate the coordinates. I have negative two, negative one is the first one. And then the other one is going to be negative two. And then the y value, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's going to be uh, the other one. Foci. Foci is this decimal, 2.65. You would go up 2.65, the dot right there. 2.65 going down would be about right here. So we have our foci, we went up and down with our C value. Now what that looks like is, as far as, a, as coordinates, okay, let's look at that. Well, now all these have a coordinate, X coordinate, of negative 2. And what did I do there? I took the Y value, which was 3. And what I did was I added and subtracted square root of 7. So this is what it'll look like uh, as a coordinate. Negative 2, 3 plus or minus uh, root 7. That would be the exact value for your foci. And we use the decimal just to estimate where exactly it would be plotted in each of these. Now we're not done yet because we're going to get the rest of the graph. B is 3. So from the center here, we go 3 to the left, make a dot. We're going to go 3 to the right, make a dot. Okay, so now we have these. Your final graph is going to look something like this. Have it go through the, the uh, vertice here. So come down, and then this one's going to go through like that. And we notice that the ellipse looks a little bit more rounded. So it's a little bit more rounded than something like this that where the previous examples look like. So that's because it's closer to zero. So again, the closer you are to zero, closer it resembles a circle.